Adam Lamb, it's so great to have you back in Australia. Thank you. Ever since you sort of came to fame with American Idol, you've always had a really good connection here. Why do you think that is? I think it's like there's a good sense of humour here. Yeah. I like the Australian humour. I think it's... Um, doesn't take itself too seriously, which I, I guess that's how I am too. Being able to laugh at yourself is really important. You're in the middle of a massive world tour with Queen. What's it been like? It's been incredible. Which means the demand's just constantly there, obviously. It's, n it's nuts. Most of the people here, this is the first time seeing the show. So even though we've been doing this for five years, it's a real opportunity to connect with new people every night. Now, this whole connection with Queen came about because when you first auditioned for American Idol, you performed Bohemian Rhapsody, right? Yeah, that's where it began. Thank God I did, because... Were you tossing up with somebody else? Yeah, well, I actually sang a Michael Jackson song first, but they didn't air that. Yeah. Hi. Don't be scared. I'm not scared. <laughs> <laughs> they all looked at me kind of like with a side tilt and a puzzled look like Michael Jackson, and I said, well, wait, can I do something else? And they said, well, what else do you have? And I said, Queen, and they said, yes. Mama, life is just begun, but now I've got and thrown it all away. Okay. Okay. You know what? I think you're a really good singer. I've had my share of sand kicked in my face, but I can And then Brian and Roger came and performed with you at the final. looked at each other and kind of went, ah, oh, okay, okay, something feels good here, something feels natural. Do they see a bit of Freddie in you? Freddie and I would get along, mm -hmm. that's what they say. Um, they say that we would probably get a kick out of each other. And I definitely think that I share his flair for the drama and the theatricality and, and the silly, you know? I mean, Freddie had a great sense of humor, from his antics on stage to the way he dressed. I don't think he, he was really taking himself seriously ever. So I think I share that with him, but, I, you know, I think it's been a really important thing to also establish that I'm not trying to be him, sure. and that I'm not doing an impersonation, and I'm not doing it the way he did it. But I'd like to think sometimes that I try to take on the spirit of, uh, in which he got on stage. songs are pretty challenging to sing. You've got to have your chops. Each song is its own animal, too. Some songs are really sensitive and smaller. Some are huge and over the top. Some are crazy and some are a little bit angry. You're kind of taking on a different beast every time. What do you do to look after your voice? I have to keep quiet a bit. On show days, you know, waking up that day, I try to just take it easy, get into the day slowly. Wake up at the crack of one o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> lots of sleep, lots of water. Generally, just making sure you're taking it easy when you're not on stage because you have to save your energy. But also, now that we've been doing this for a while now, I can get out there and sort of negotiate with the set every night to kind of make sure I get to the end. is of course a maths genius so do you guys when you're sort of hanging backstage talk about multiplication <laughs> maths was like my worst subject in school it's like the furthest thing he's also really into saving wildlife like badgers i think yeah one of the things i love so much about brian is he, he's got a huge heart he's very sympathetic towards animals and and uh, you know people that don't have privilege and um, it's a beautiful thing about him He's also got huge hair. Is there a fight for the hairspray? He does have big hair. I mean, sometimes I wish I had his volume. Uh, <laughs> and my favorite thing is we have these cannons on the foot of the stage that are like white plumes of smoke. He would actually be able to tell you what the science is behind it, sure. but I guess it creates like a static effect. And sometimes I'll look at him during that moment and his hair <laughs> will have gone from a curl to like a straight up. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's my favorite thing. Queen said tonight they were planning a big musical event dedicated to their lead singer, Freddie Mercury, who died last night of AIDS. Too late. My time.
Do you feel sorry for the fact that, that when Freddie Mercury died, he was kind of a victim of the times and, and he felt he wasn't able to be honest about the fact that he was suffering from AIDS and, and never really came out? I often think to myself, what would Freddie be like now? How would he feel about subjects like his sexuality? Or, um, you know, a sexually transmitted disease. Um, being in a time now where it's manageable, and mm. it's not at that sentence now. So it would be really interesting to talk to him about it in, in, in 2018, you know? And I think one of the things I've learned about Freddie from the guys and from watching interviews, is even though he was a bit private about that part of his life, he didn't really have much of a filter. No, that's true. He was very outspoken and kind of matter of fact. So it would be interesting to see how he would be now, because I think he would be sort of an open book.